Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Studio Scory channel. My name is Mazaru. Uh, I am online known as uh, Dire Dragon, but uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, I'm okay with being referred as Nick. He goes by Nick when we go on streams. So that's why I called. Him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, today we're both going to be covering a brief overview of the Lubokan region. Let's jump in, shall we? So, a brief overview. Victims of colonialization attempts and exploitation, the Lobokans are sadly no stranger to foreign influence. Even in their earliest years, kings and chieftains from the north and south have been trying to conquer one another. The spread of Lahada and Theosism, respectively, did much to increase this tension, where once peaceful tribes would fight one another over the supremacy of their respective faiths. However, Laboka is progressing physically and psychology, psychologically excuse me, into modern times, and just might even surpass the modern world with her people's ambition, dedication, and patience. Laboka has suffered greatly at the expense of imperial powers, including those of her own soil. In their efforts to move beyond their historic transgressions, a great deal of natural wealth and beauty has become the forefront of their interregional importance, with much of Laboka comprising manufacturing or trading hubs, both of which bring home the credits. And so here we have a map of the Lubokan Union. The Lubokan Union comprises of every sun-recognized state in Lubokan, with the exception of Sulganar and Benesia, the former having been suspended due to the recently resolved Sulgari Civil War, while the latter has refused to join the interregional government. And so you can see here Dobagona Winizi is the capital, and there's where Dobagona is. The leader is the chairwoman uh, Nokanyo Tambo, and there's 22 official members. So let's... Uh, Let's talk about every nation in Loboka in uh, alphabetic order, shall we? So first up, we have Aranka, which is a parliamentary republic led by Prime Minister Salim Abrahim from its capital of Gohar. The largest religion is Lahada, and they speak Balaic, Yamian, Viscorian, and Soktemian. Aranka is notable for its storied past spanning thousands of years, thriving in the imaginations of Scorians across the world that romanticized this period in ancient history. Pharaohs, towering monuments, uh, political intrigue, and they, these have all been uh, staple tropes in popular culture. Uh, Aranka is also the only Lahada majority nation with Theosis symbols in its flags and seals. Uh, you can see the Ankh in the flag in the center, uh, while symbolic of the Nefe and Demet civilizations is also used by the Soktemian Theosis. Next, we have Bandiku, which is a parliamentary republic. Uh, led by President Lomandi Normoka from its capital of Nagroya. Theosism is the largest religion, and they speak Izubandi, Yedanian, Zabili, Gulhari, Pilwanian, and Veskorian. While numerous native groups can be found here, the nation is named after the largest group, the Izubandiku. The Izubandiku had a very strong warrior culture, and this played a great part in defending their land from Kalantrian, Malinkan, and Veskorian invaders. And also, up until 585 DE, which had a government reformation, instead of a single official capital, Bandiku had ten unofficial capital cities, one for each of the ten largest tribes. Next, we have Bashkan, a single-party socialist republic led by Chancellor Afrabiz Bugdawi, from the capital Agashkal. Uh, Lahada is also the largest faith, and they speak Halkar and Balaik. As a single-party socialist state, Bashkan is the only member of the International Alliance of Socialist Nations that's from the Boka and perhaps could be the longest-lasting socialist republic in history, which started in the Selitz Re Revolution uh, shortly after the Lubokan War. Uh, Bashkan is also one of the few Lahada countries to openly allow bars and serve alcohol in public. Uh, consequentially, it has the second-highest uh, alcohol consumption in Lubokan. Moving on to Barobia, a parliamentary republic led by Prime Minister Klelia Ramanisa from its capital, Manantra. Theosism is also the largest religion in Barobia, and they speak Bessarobi, Valdish, and Balaic. Uh, Barobia is one of our newest additions to the world map, given its proximity to Matafua. The Barobian culture is actually considered a marriage between central Lubokan and Matafuan cultures. Though most outsiders associate Barobia from the popular animated film depicting zoo animals from Nullsgrad getting sent abroad and washing up there. It's pretty funny. And let's get into Benesia a militaristic monarchy led by King Isef ibn Shazim from the capital Kasharman, and the largest faith, excuse me, the official faith, being Dream Conjuring. 
Benessians speak Venessian, Malinkan, and Rumalese. The ruling classes of Benessia converted to dream conjuring recently after priest, excuse me, after Prince Himli al Daud says the central figure in that faith visited him in dreams over the course of months and guided him to riches. Benessia is also the first country in Laboka, in fact, so far the only country in Laboka to legalize fireweed, but only if you could afford the price per ounce or you are of royal blood. Moving on to. Dorjistan. Dorjistan is an executive monarchy led by Sultan Mustafa Ayaz Mirash Dorjstu from the capital Karangarum. Lahada is the official religion and they speak Halkar and Balaic. Dorjistan was the beating heart of the Faltez Sultanate and remains a controversial state to this day, reinforcing a draconian rule of old along with a few other nations in the region. Also, the tradition of Lahada dervishes began in Dorjistan. Onlookers inside mosques became fascinated with the non-verbal worship of the dervishes, when in reality they were really just an early form of uh, dance classes. Next, we have Iswatu, a federal republic led by President Temalka Zol from the capital Dorma. Theosism is the largest religion in Iswatu, and they speak Zabili, Yedanian, Pilwanian, and Viscorium. Iswatu is home to a number of fauna that stereotypically are associated with Laboka, like gorillaphants, elephantillas, ligers, and the famed gazilla beast. They can be found all over in the Mapumbe Nature, excuse me, Nature Reserve, one of the largest nature reserves in the world, nearly twice the size of the island nation of Arcosia. Moving on to Idiha, a republic led by President Ismaili Reza Karman from the capital, Idiha City. Lahada is the largest faith, and they speak Balaic. Idiha, as a city-state, was once the early capital of the Fatez, when they still had a plethora of land in Valscoria. When they lost these lands to revolution and internal strife, the capital was relocated from Idiha to Karangorun in Dorjistan. Taking advantage of this, those in the Hrenic League partitioned Idiha from its previous territory in the Lubokan War, cultivating it into an independent city-state, influenced by both Balaic and Halkar values. Moving on to another city-state on the other side of the region, Jirawi. Jirawi is an executive monarchy led by Aga Khan, the seventh Aga Khan, excuse me, Mansur al-Sheikh, uh, from the capital, Jirawi. Uh, Lahada is the official religion, and they speak Balaic. Jirawi is the home of the Aga Khan, the central figurehead in al Khafal Lahada, the third largest branch or school of Lahada in the Qasim world. Al Khafal teaches that their rulers are direct descendants of the Prophet in Lahada, despite the ceremonial office being formed uh, relatively recently, give or take 200 years ago. Despite this, Jirawi remains a turbulent and vibrant city state, nestled between two of the most bitter rivals in the world. Moving on to Kalantris. Kalantris is a federal republic led by President Brendo Bakashinga from the capital of Gasea. Lahada is the largest religion and they speak Gulhari, Sulgari, Nidi, and Sangale. Kalantris is the ancient homestead of the Gasseans, a, prou uh, excuse me, a proud group of central Lobokans known for their ability to adapt and improvise. Many Gasseans formed kingdoms all across Laboka and even became great merchants that sailed the world over. Furthermore, Kalantris has proved time and time again to be a land favored by foreigners, historically sought after by the Fautes and the Vescorians, despite maintaining independence and having some of the highest migration rates in the region today. Moving on to Kamania. Yeah, so Kamania is, is a republic, and it's led by President Mehmed Sakar or from its capital, um, some, uh, some work, ha, huh? I'm not one of the best at names. Uh, oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, huh, that is the largest religion and the nation speaks Kamadian and Holkar. Mania is in fact the newest nation in Loboga to gain independence and is recognized by the sun after decades of infighting between its neighbors and civil unrest within the region. The big, the big Five saw an opportunity to establish a state loyal to their cause in Northern Roboka and sent the Kamanian supplies and even soldiers to fight for its liberation. This was never confirmed by the Big Five and the trials of Nolzgrad. However, Nigeria is still attempting to uncover the evidence of any involvement of specific uh, nations outside of Loboka to secure Kamanian independence. 
Von Tu, Maiko, a republic led by President Abdirahman Shabal from the capital, Maiko City. Uh, Lahada is the largest faith in Maiko, and they speak Solgari and Valmora. Maiko was once a Valmoran territory captured during the Lavokan War and used as a springboard for a one final assault into the Fatez strongholds of present-day Dorjustan and Bashkan. It is considerably one of the wealthiest states in Laboka, and is the smallest by land area of the three city-states in the region. The name comes from a Valmoran mistranslation of Amajiko, meaning Land of the Big Rocks, in reference to the large boulders that dot the coast of the Bay of Hex. In addition, in their fierce passion of their independence, Maiko has one of the most militarized borders in the world with a border with Solganar. Their defense system and border is so sophisticated and state-of-the-art that military engineers from across the world come to study it. Moving on to Meadland, a republic led by Prime Minister Eric Strassus from the capital Blackwall. Theosism is the largest religion, and they speak Malinkin, Rumulese, and Kausa. Meadland was a fringe colony established by, excuse me, was a fringe colony established near the inevitable decline of the Lincoln Empire, named in honor of Captain Robert Meadland. The capital derives its name from Fort Blackwall, formerly Fort Williamson. It was renamed to remember the time when its entire reserves of hot tar were poured down the fort's walls, permanently coating it in black and causing the invading forces to retreat. While the fort has been long demolished, traces of it through pillars can be seen throughout the city. Next, we have Nidawai, an, excuse me, a constitutional monarchy led by King Bekumbuso Tazdinawi from the capital of Intababom. Theosism is the official religion of Nidawai, and they speak Nidi, Sulgari, Pilwanian, and Viscorian. Nidawai is one of the largest nations in Laboka and the largest Theosis nation in the region. Nidawai was the seat of the Talaku Nidi Empire and the second largest Labokan state before the rise of the Fautes. Furthermore, given its historical context and colonial ties to Venenum, the two nations have a very close relationship. In major cities like in Tababom, Viscorian can still be spoken in some districts, as well as an influx of Viscorian restaurants. As for Venenum, Nidi people constitute a large demographic in the Republic, and Nidi is recognized as a protected minority language, even taught in some schools in the south of the island nation. Moving on to Pilwana. Pilwana is a military dictatorship led by President Alugar Gomeka from the capital of Banuk. Theosism is the largest faith in Pilwana, and they speak Pilwanian, Nidi, Gulhari, and Vescorium. Perhaps in stark contrast with its northern neighbors, the nation of Pilwana has a pretty bad relationship with their former rulers, both colonial and independent. The nation became a military junta in the 580s after Pilwanan General Okoth Gomeka seized power and, and ousted what the Pilwanians viewed as a independent and inefficient government. When Okoth died in 606 DE, his son, General Alugar Gomeka, stepped into power and has slowly been liberalizing Gomeka, or Pilwana. And moving on to Kandal. And the nation of Kandal um, is an absolute monarchy led by Sultan Ahmed bin Mohammed al Kajem Osu. And, it's, uh, and their capital is Malji Horat. And the official and state religion of Kadal is the Lahada. And they also, and Kadal, they speak Balaic, Wasli, and Malinkin. And Kadal's uh, rulers have always been Gassan. The sultans descended from Emir, Emir Kuba Mafuz, uh, Mashafuz, who led an army to what is now Maji Hurat. And conquered it from uh, conquered it for himself and establishing the Emirate of Gabira in the 500s BDE. Since that time, the territory of the Gabi Gobi Hirla has always been respected and was the only lands of the Falta Sultanate to join willingly when the two families of each state strike up an alliance that remains to this day. Now, however, Malji Horat uh, remains as a tyrant's dreamscape, a nation abound in wealth from oil and mineral deposits, but controlled by nepotistic uh, and despotic traditionalists. And moving on to Arkarcha. Now, 
uh, Rakarcha is a military dictatorship led by General Sekir Humit and uh, is from its capital, Ahala. And the official and state religion of Rakarcha is Lahada. And Lahada speak, not Lahada, uh, Rakarcha speaks a multitude of languages, including Rakarchan, Balaic, Kamanian, and Targulhuli. Now, given its religious significance, the capital of Ahala was, was once known as the Alankur of the East and was one of the only major cities in the Balkan War to be spared from its destruction and an absolute, excuse me, an admiration of its legacy. At the request of the Vol, at the request of the Volda's general, who was a, mind you, was a history buff, prior to the present junta that took place, uh, that took place and then controlled the country in the 580s DE, Ricardo was once considered the most progressive and liberal of all nations in Laboka. Since the junta has come to power and has been accused of several human rights violations over the years. And the nation has only just begun, and only nations now have only just begun to condemn the actions of of the military dictatorship. Now on to Rumpush. Rumpush is a unitary republic uh, led by President Philippe Mordul from its capital of Kirgu. The largest religion is Theosism, and Rumpush speaks. Krasa, Ramulis, and Gulhari. Now, Rumpush has a prep, has a plethora of vast natural resources and mineral reserves, and is untapped due to the expensive, expansive, and dense jungles of the interior. With consideration to its relative poverty level, is the least is the least developed nation of Skora, as well as the youngest nation in La Boca with a medium age of sixteen years. In spite of its lack of development, many room. Many of the Rapushians are turning to tourism and encouraging visitors to visit any of its pristine beaches along the Gulf of Kyogu. Moving on to Shudar, a constitutional monarchy led by Shah Vahid Suleiman III from the capital of Varangoa. Shudar's official religion is Lahara, and they speak Halkar, Wasli, and Balaic. A proud and ancient nation, Shudar was once considered to be, quote, the cradle of civility. That is, until evidence has been unearthed with, within northern Vesuna, pointing to the Empire of Nier as being an earlier empire. Uh, nevertheless, within the ancient Halkar Valleys, it spawned some of the most ancient and sophisticated civilizations in all of Scoria, whose legacies can still be felt in modern times. Even the most remote villages in Shudar still follow Bamurabi's law, wherein the criminal offender owes the victim an equal or material cost in exchange for their wrongdoing. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Shudar is also the epicenter of the Wadin costumes and is the largest Wadini nation in the world. This has resulted in some unfavorable relations in the past with their neighbors, especially before the Lubokan War, where their main rival was the infamous Fatih Sultanate. Moving on to Sulgariland, a federal republic led by President Moheb Ibn Waberi from the capital of Khalova. Lahara is the largest faith, and they speak Sulgari, Vescorian, and Nidi. Another vestige of the Vescorian Empire, the colonial government of Sulgariland institutionalized liberal and democratic values, resulting in a stark shift in ideology between those in independent and colonial Sulganar. The two nations briefly unified at a time in the 590s, but this ended quickly in one of the deadliest modern conflicts in history, also known as the Sulgari Civil War. When regaining their independence, it only took a week for the majority of the Skorinyai nation's members to recognize this nation and petition them to have a seat in the General Assembly. And in spite of its arduous past, Sulgariland has been seen as a very progressive nation, with it, with Kolova having recently been named as the most eco-friendly city in northern Laboka, after it had banned automobiles and preferring to rely on electric trains and non-gas-powered vehicles. Moving on to its uh, close brethren nation and neighbor, Sulganar a republic led by President Darman Mukhtar from the capital of Yaksima. Lahara is the official religion, and they speak only Sulgari. Brief history, Marjit Hinama Mindosa, a Samundari-born Lahara cleric, came to the nation to facilitate the warring clans during the First World War. It ended with his, with his descendants forming a clan of their own and ruling the nation until the outbreak of the Sulgari Civil War 
where he was eventually killed and several warlords vied for their control. In 611, a democratic order was finally reinstated, with President Darman Mukhtar being elected in what was considered the first real election in Silgari history. On a brighter note, it's also believed bagpipes were first invented by the Solgari. Uh, don't tell it to the Malinkins, FYI. <laughs> they won't want to know that. Mm-hmm. Moving on to Trashyard. Yeah. Uh, Trashyard is a parliamentary republic led by Prime Minister Michael Harat from its capital of Rogersburg. And the largest religion is Theosism and... Trashyard, uh, while the most Malinkin speakers are known as Trashyardian, however, locally it was known as Trakasa. And Trakasa is, you can think of it as like a creole of Malinkin, Malish, and Balaic. And Trashyard, the Trashyard territory um, was founded by the Polish Empire, then claimed by the Malinkins, and is virtually hated by everybody in Lapoka. Is still, in fact, unrecognized by Kadal by Kadal and Benesia, despite obtaining Lepokan Union membership in 609D, following a border agreement between Kadal and Trashyard. And you can sort of think of Trashyard almost like a rainbow na- almost like a rainbow nation with various ethnicities and having both colonizers and native peop and native peoples living together. Moving on to Winizi. Winizi is a federal republic led by Prime Minister Johanna Limpishi from the capital of Tubong. Lahda is the majority uh, largest faith, but you can, can kind of consider this to be a plurality of both Lahda and Theosism. This is really where Lahda, Theosism, and even native faiths come together. Uh, and they speak a variety of languages, but the largest four being Sangale, Tarhuli, Kausa, and Kuhari. Considerably the largest nation in southern Boka by land and population, Wanizi is a beautiful mosaic of cultures from the north and south of the region coming together and ruling in peace and prosperity. And so, like I said, the four languages listed here are the four most spoken. However, the nation can recognize, excuse me, does recognize up to 600 local languages and has set up a commission to archive and preserve the histories of these cultures. There are approximately 50 recognized languages with a single native speaker remaining. Wanizi is also the leader in Lebokan based IT industry often accompanied by a variety of international tech support hotlines. And, furthermore, Winizi is the only Lebokan country to win at the International War Bowl League's tournament, and they've done it twice. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about Yadinya, a federal republic in the northern part of Laboka, led by President Muzra Hiwab, from the capital of Jalahabid. Lahra is the majority language, and they speak Balaik, Xarbik, and Yamian. Yadinya was formed as a distinct entity in the Middle Ages. It began with an agreement between Bayin and Balaik merchants, known as the Hoyadin. They established the city of al as their mutual trading post, which expanded over the centuries, becoming the territory and country of Yadinya. Yadinya is one of the few countries in Laboka to not rely on oil as their main source of income and exports. Instead, fishing, agriculture, and even tourism dominate. And with that being said, that just about covers all the nations in the Boca. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you'd like to see our... Sorry, go ahead. I'll let you speak. Uh, no, no, it's all good. And I am glad to be part of this World Building Wednesday. Yeah, Nick, thanks for joining us. If you'd like to see our segments of World Building Wednesday live, you can follow me at twitch.tv forward slash Uh We'll be covering more regions with this similar format in the near future. So uh, thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next video.